Good morning from Tatooine. We're about to head down to the Luage station and find a ride to this ruined Berber village called Shinini. Just look at the indigenous housing that the Berbers used to live in. Because Shinini is up on a hill, so down at the bottom there are some local people that still live there. And they use some of the buildings of Shinini um, as storage for like granaries or something. It's up on a hill, so there's a lot of hiking and a lot of things to see. So I'm really excited. But yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll be heading over there pretty soon. American. Yes. Washington. Uh, California. California. You get a lot of people from America here. In the winter. Uh, we've been here three weeks now. Three weeks? Three weeks. Uh, we went to uh, Bizer, Tunis, Kabul, uh, Cordobus. Uh, what do you do? Uh, yeah, but I, I, I'm very small. Like, I don't make money or anything. It's just more for my, it's more for me. But yeah. for me, it's just uh, more for memories. Do you mind if I took a picture? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Looks really cool. So our destination is up there, that white mosque. Our host said that it's from a much later date, the uh, mosque than the village itself. They have multiple tickets. There's the mosque. This place is probably packed with people in the summer. So the wind is dying down. So I can actually vlog and talk. Except I'm really tired. So vlogging and talking. Bonjour. There we go. The wind stopped. <laughs> when you get out into the open, the wind just is crazy. But you have these walls that are protecting us from the wind. There's just some incredible views. What do you think, Florian? I think it's amazing. We're on top of the cafe. I do want some food, though. Fantastic right now. Someone asked him if I can go inside the mosque. Salam. Bonjour. Bienvenue. Ça va? Ça va bien. Ça va bien. Chocolat. Italien? No, only English and uh, poco espanol. Parle pas un peu français. No. no. Tu es pas Kenza? Kenza? Tu à l'hôtel Kenza? Ah uh, no, uh, Tatooine. Ah oh, Tatooine. Uh, friend. Uh, friend. Elle est ton friend. My ah, friend. Ah, yeah. Will come a shinini. Ah. Will come. I check. I check. Shway Arab, huh? Shway, shway. The mosque. You can go inside or no? The mosque? You can go inside? Close the side? No, no, no. Mosque. mosque. Uh, yeah, closed. She's put Ah, okay. Lexar, visit Lexar. Lexar, okay. Visit Lexar. Hi, Shukran. Welcome. Thank you. The guy was super friendly. There's a donkey on the trail. I guess my destination is all the way up there. This is a fascinating place. I have to do more research on the on the Berbers having visited this place now. This is really, really fascinating.
I guess I'm going all the way to the top. Because you can't come to Janini without going to the top. This is truly an incredible, incredibly fascinating place. A lot of the doors are really, really small, I've noticed. Mission for today, get to the top and then go back down to the bottom and get a little McClub sandwich or something. So look at the doors, they just crawl in there. I know once I get to the top, you're not gonna hear me anymore. It's gonna be completely windy. There's the mosque again, almost to the top. So fascinating. Must have just taken years, if not decades, to build all of this. Pretty much to the top now, I think. Look at that view. I can already hear the wind. So cool. Look at this view, this looks just like Baja. Alright, I'll stop talking. Right now. The top, though. This is the top, the very top of Shimini. Or Shinini. Hopefully it's not too windy, but we're walking to the top of the hill that overlooks Tatooine, the city that uh, George Lucas uh, decided to name one of the planets in Star Wars after. We're about halfway up the mountain right now, and I won't talk long because it's so windy and you probably can't even hear me right now, but this is just an amazing view. We're halfway up the mountain right now, but this view is incredible. We're approaching uh, some Arabic writings, which apparently says Mahaba, which is like hello or like peace be with you, I think. Uh, which is pretty cool. Because in uh, America, we have like the Hollywood sign and here they have the Marhaba sign. So here it is. So it says Marhaba, but there's a space. This is Mar Marhaba. Uh, a lot of t I don't think, I mean, I can't speak for all Arabic, but I know at least that a lot of words don't put an N at the end. Uh -huh. Like Ramadan doesn't uh -huh. have an N at the end. Uh -huh. It's just pronounced with an N. So what is that then? I don't know. I was trying to look that up. Uh -huh. It's probably like maybe, I don't know, visitors. Uh, visitors. We're staying like way over there in the hills somewhere. Probably can't even hear me because it's all windy. It's okay. We're exploring this unfinished building that they were probably uh, building during the revolution. But we found this little makeshift ladder. And we're about to head to the highest point of this hill. And then afterwards, I probably won't film it because it's so windy can't really even hear me but we're gonna walk that way there's a trail that goes off further into the mountains and we're just gonna go and check it out how is it up there beautiful look at those clouds Church? look at those clouds yeah okay the one benefit about being super light it just feels like it's not gonna break at all that's why i'm glad i'm not 280 anymore uh. Look at this view. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. <laughs> well, I'm excited for the trip.
trail. The trail goes like super far over there. There's benches and stuff. I guess I should film this in case Florian falls. So I can prove to his parents that I did not kill him. Don't break it. <laughs> you made it. Coming down. I know. That's the plan. The worst part about getting too high is coming back down. Oh. It's all just put together with like one nail. There's like one nail on each plywood. Oh. You made it. You're still alive. Okay, we're gonna take this now. All right. See you tomorrow. <laughs> all right, now into the desert. So our uh, host is taking us to a indigenous Berber village called Zar Uled Sultan. All the uh, roads are like this. <laughs> Just be careful because you can go We are here now. We made it. Okay, we made it. Salam. The best. The best. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Wanti alhamdulillah. Wanti alhamdulillah. Wala alhamdulillah. Wala alhamdulillah. Bnin barsha. Bnin barsha. Bnin barsha. Behi barsha. Behi barsha. Wanti shway shway. Well, here we are. Zar Uled Sultan. I didn't think there was going to be like an actual town right next to it. Yeah. Yeah. I think if we came here in the morning, there would have been like more. I want to climb that. Yeah, I want to climb that. <laughs> I want to climb that. this one. Huh? I want to climb this one. Alright, you climb that one, I'll climb this one. Climbed up this. Okay, now I gotta climb that one, which is even higher. Are you gonna climb up there? Yeah. Going down's like scarier. Salam. Alhamdulillah. La bas. Oh, I gotta go to the top of this staircase for a better view. I'm just so excited that I actually made it here because I thought I was gonna have to skip it on this journey here down to Tatooine. Uh, but our host graciously offered to take us here and I'm so grateful because this is an amazing, amazing place. So I'm now in Safax. We took the luage from Tatooine 
to Gabez where we stayed a night and we went and like explored an oasis. But anyways, we took a bus from Gabez to Zafax. So the same two dinar. Yeah, it was, uh, the bus was seven dinar and the luage was 9.7. So like less than three dinars, pretty much one US dollar more. And uh, we decided to opt for the cheaper one, the bus. And we get on the bus, we hop in the back, everything's fine, I guess. And then there's this lady just staring at me. And any time someone stares at me, I just like, you know, say salam, wave at him back. And she just gives me this like, this like very weak little wave. And then I think nothing of it. And then she puts her chair back and, and Derek is right behind, right behind her and the seat's going all the way back to pretty much like almost touching him. Like, I was kind like, of feeling claustrophobic. <laughs> Like, uh, from like, all right, if this is the worst, if this is the worst of it, then I, I guess I could handle it. Yeah, and like, I was looking back and just didn't really look that cozy. But, uh, pretty much like five to ten minutes into the journey once we left to Gabez. It was like it was less than that. Yeah, it was like, it was like five. immediately when we started going. <laughs> yeah. Um, she just starts vomiting everywhere, and I'm like listening to music and I hear it over the music because she's, um, She's just like gagging, like like li literally, like, like she's possessed ah! by the devil, and uh, and so I look over and I just see like this red vomit, just like I don't know if she had pomegranate juice or blood, but it it, it sounded and looked very bad, and uh, I thought it was like a baby or something. I was like, yeah. I, I thought it was like further up, and I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna worry about it because it's like some baby. Then I realized it was right in front of me. Yeah. The lady, I'm like, oh God, it was all over the floor. All over the floor. And, and it started rolling back to me. So I had to put my, my legs up. I had to like hug my legs up on the seat. <laughs> Basically just try to keep everything off the floor. Just... And uh, and like I'm in the center, I'm in the aisle seat and Florian is next to the window. And I just kind of look at him, like open up the open up the window. We're gonna die in here, and I, I start gagging. We open up the window. I get that gust of wind, and I just start feeling immediately better. You're like struggling with the window. Like <laughs> hurry up, hurry up, please. And then like I don't know, like 15 minutes later, I just gave her my water, so I hoped I figured that would help because. I don't know, I wasn't sure if she had like blood in her vomit or what. I put in my earbuds because I didn't want to hear it, obviously. And then I guess it was about an hour or 40 minutes later or something. I, uh, I'm like, all right, I'm done with music. I just want to enjoy the piece. So I take him out and immediately she starts puking again. <laughs> and, it, and it sounded like twice as bad this time. And and everyone just starts to get up and, just, and migrates yeah. to the front of the bus. It was a lot, like more so was coming out. I think the water that I gave her unfortunately made it worse. I don't know, it was just like literally the worst bus journey of my life. It was like a two hour, two and a half hour bus ride and I'm just glad that it's over. We're in Safax now. We're walking over to the Luar station to take it to El Gem, the El Gem amphitheater. And yeah, so that's what's happening. Salam. The sortie? Merci. We just landed in El Gem, so the amphitheater is just right in the center of the frame. How do you feel about making it around the country? This is our last thing to see, and then we're back in Tunis today. Back where it all started. Back where it all started, at Nader's place. Two more days with Nader. That's really where it launched off, I guess. And then, uh, off to Malta. Yeah. And he's going to Algeria. But this is a pretty magnificent view so far. Salam. Salam. Kadesh? Twelve dinars each. Okay. So we decided to enter El Jam since it is the uh, like most famous attraction here in Tunisia. So walk with me. I might not talk that much because I haven't had any water. What are you doing here? <laughs> okay, 
I'm on the other side now and I figured you gotta see it as well. I'm sitting here at Cap Angelo, which is where I started my journey in Tunisia uh, one month ago. Um, I've come full circle. I've explored practically every part of Tunisia. And tomorrow, or actually today, well, I guess technically tomorrow at 2 a.m., but tonight, 2 a.m., uh, I move forward to Malta, which is part of Europe. Um, it's not on mainland Europe, it's an island between Tunisia and Italy and um, and from there I will spend a week on the island of Gozo which is part of Malta and uh, and then I move on to Egypt for two weeks and so I'm really excited for Malta I'm really excited to experience some new culture because I felt like in this last month I've pretty much seen everything uh, that I can in Tunisia and definitely a place I'll come back to in the future but right now I'm ready to move forward and see what's next um, in this world in this beautiful world of ours so follow me there and have a good day <laughs> 